five separate trips spanning 24 days and thousands of casts later have led me to this story. As fishermen, we all have that one bucket list fish, rewarded by the journey and humbled by the pursuit. Fooling a trophy Kubera snapper on an artificial lure has been a lifelong goal of mine. Over the next six days, my buddy Ryan and I will challenge ourselves to catch some of Panama's most elusive game fish on nothing but artificial lures. I've had the privilege of fishing in Panama five times now, but one fish has always eluded me until now. Enorme oh, rooster! enorme! Join us oh as we fish God. some of Panama's most remote coastline and tame Panama's ultimate predator. <laughs> On the sixth day, he gave us a Kupera! The big ones. Yeah, yeah like two, two to three hundred pounders. Even more. November and June. May? He said, yeah. you want your best shot of Kuberas, come in May. Yeah. Right. You know? But I'm not, I'm not rigging anything, I'm good. Yeah. Must add sponsors now. I'm pumped. So first morning at the Pana Fishing Lodge, we got a week full of good fish, bro time. I don't know what else you could ask for. Yeah, no girls on this trip, man. No rules. Ryan's afraid of the ladies. <laughs> How green this all is? Yeah, no, that's what he was saying. He said everything's brown, you'll see. Yeah. This is our third time back to this lodge and we've always taken a different route to get to the beach because they have what's called a northern wind here and it still hasn't switched over like their spring summer season hasn't switched over to that and if you look over everything is dry and dead. Panama has a really distinct rainy season that kind of starts like at the end of March and goes until October I'd say but it has not started yet. Everything is super brown, but we are in the middle of a rainforest, essentially. It's very interesting to see the environment change because I've been here three different times a year, November, so at the end of the rainy season, in the middle of it in June, and then now is May, like the transition of it. So just always interesting to see how places change. But we came here based on the recommendation of our captain last time, and he's been fishing these waters since he was, I don't know, like, a young child and he's yeah he's, he's in his 50s now and he's been a captain here for over 20 years and he said may is his favorite month to fish so that's why we decided to come again in may so if you guys want to see where we're on a, on a map so we're like in the little pit of panama in the very southeast corner i would say in a town called pedasi or pedasi i think they call it there's panama city that's where we flew into and we took a nice six hour drive with our man, Carlos. More like oh. eight. <laughs> a lot of traffic. All the way down the coast to this little village right here. Pretty cool. I mean, it's flat. It's just a swell, huh? Bring your surfboard, dude. For real. Are you soaking this up? Look at this, guys. If your fishing day starts like this, I don't know how you can't be happy. Look at that. It's gorgeous. So now what we're gonna do is, there's a panga. They're gonna drive up on the beach, and there's not a lot of infrastructure in terms of like inlets or harbors because the environment just doesn't really support it here. They get a lot of rainfall, they get huge tidal swings. So what it's really popular to do around here is actually leave your boat kind of moored out on a buoy. We got Cubera's catch. And as you see, Ryan is very excited. So we got the Twin V out there. They're gonna pick us up in the Panga, drop us off on the Panga, and that's what they do. It's their daily routine. It's pretty cool. It just adds to the adventure and the experience here. What's that? What is it? Yeah. It's our man Javi right here. Where we're launching out of today, completely different than where we normally launch out of. Can you guys see that swell? is cranking. I mean, there's some overhead swells out there. It's it's no joke. So it looks like Javi's gonna time it out. 
to get there because you do not want to get in the crossfires of a swell on this boat right here. Well, what a way to start the morning. Ryan just caught a beautiful rooster fish on his first cast. I don't think you could top that right there. I'm working the subsurface stick bait, so a little bit, you know, subtler of a presentation, but it does sink, so I kind of, kind of fish another area of the water column. Maybe some fish are finicky, finickier, they're not going to want to come up and investigate the popper as much. That's where this bait comes in, and it's good that we kind of switch it up, try multiple presentations to see what the fish are really going to react to. Crazy that about, what, 12 years ago when we met, you were working in Dunkin' Donuts, I, I was, was slaying donuts for my first job. I was I was late for band camp. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, Ryan. I like the story. Keep going. Let's see where this is going. We were both, you know, more concerned about going to the pier on the weekend than literally anything else. You know, maybe girls at the time. That was that was pretty much the end of our thought process. Is what we were gonna catch at the pier and what girl were we trying to, you know, get to hang out with us? Yeah, I was much more concerned with the fish earlier in my life than the girls. <laughs> girls came very late to me. <laughs> You know, I don't want to say anything, but uh, me and Ryan met online on a forum called Boat Was Fishing. Pre-social media, when you wanted to slide into DMs, you slide into DMs on the forums, if that was even a thing. That was the Instagram back in the day for fishermen, a forum called Boat Was Fishing. There was this magical pier called Juno Pier. All the Deerfield kids, I was a Deerfield kid who used to go to. We saw this guy, Ryan, and of course he was sarcastic in his usual way and instantly charmed all of us. And here we are 12 years later. We just made a pretty substantial run here. Went by that pod of dolphins, found a school of birds, and uh... School of birds, huh? Flock of birds. <laughs> We're fishing a rock. We're fishing some type of reef. Ryan and I told ourselves, on this trip, if I'm throwing a popper, he's throwing a stick bait. If I'm throwing a stick bait, he's throwing a popper. So, two different presentations. We're gonna see which one works better. This is gonna be right on top. That lure will sink is basically as deep as you want it. If you let it sink for 60 seconds, you're gonna be on bottom. And he's gonna sweep that thing through the water column, whereas this is just gonna create a big bubble trail, try to race fish up. Both of them work, but we're gonna see which one works better today. Oh! I don't know. Oh! I don't know what it is. Yeah, I guess it's a small needle fish. Woo! I freaking set the hook like Dude, it was a Kubera, though. I literally thought you were that thing in the water. You set the hook so hard. Dude, I got Kubera on the mine. I set the hook so dang hard on this thing, it's not going to have a face left. <laughs> oh, gets your blood pumping. I'm kind of nervous for... Oh, 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 what is this? I don't know. It might not have been a Kubera. Or someone might have ate it. What do you think? No. Dude, I think you got a jack or a bluefin. A bluefin. Oh, a bluefin trevally, yeah. maybe? I don't know, but just decided to go down. Yeah, that's what we came here. Oh, it's, oh, a, it's rainbow a rainbow runner. Hell yeah. Ooh, that's sick. Comer. Javi, hey. that's dinner right there. <laughs> yes. Woo, look at that. There's my first fish in Panama. And I wasn't kidding when I said that I ripped his face. You see the top of his head right there? I stuck that thing so hard because we're fishing the tightest drag possible for the possibility of a big Kubera always, but that is a gorgeous first fish in Panama for your boy Vic, and I know it's gonna eat up well. Definitely gonna make him to some good sashimi and sushi. What really surprises me, look at how small his mouth is. That thing is tiny. And for him to go and eat a popper that big, I don't even know how he thinks he could fit that in his mouth, and it's not like he has teeth that he could chop, you know, the popper in half. Just very interesting fish. They're really like nothing else in terms of like morphology. If comparing them to a mackerel or something, they're very unique. They almost look like a, a cobia body. We got an afternoon update for you guys. Here's the thing. Look at the camera when you speak. Come on, these, give the people the time of day. These two weirdos standing on the front of the boat seven years ago when we were talking about making YouTube videos could have never dreamed that we were going to be in Panama doing stuff like this. And it's easy, the more you travel, the more you do things to take this for granted. But sometimes it's very, you know, you take a step back and you're like, wow, it's incredible how far you've come from just having a stupid little GoPro on your chest. And, uh, you know, 
wanting to make YouTube videos. <laughs> oh, oh. Wow. Ooh, look, it's a pretty fish. Dang, son. Yeah. Wow. See, sí, primero. See. Sí, Fish total, Vic, Rainbow Runner, Ryan Mori, one rooster, Ryan Mori, one mullet snapper. That's on my list of fish I'd like to catch before I die as well. I've been committed to the popper all day. All it takes for me is just knowing that any moment I could hook a potential record size fish on this thing and seeing it come up top would just make my day. Oh, oh, Jax. No, Jack, no. Jack. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, rooster, 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 big rooster. Oh my gosh, big rooster just came Giant up with the jack. Giant rooster with the jack. First spot of the day, bust. It's kind of rough out here. It's a lot windier this morning than it was uh, yesterday. So our plan for today, there's these grouper that they call cherna. Um, they're these like deep water grouper that kind of look like our snowy grouper. And we really want to catch those, but they got to have the perfect conditions because it's deep. So if it's really windy, if there's too much current, you're not going to be able to jig for them. Pretty much bring the stuff to do it every single day. So captain's got to feel it out. Javi said it's a possibility. It's jigging time. It's going to be the deepest spot we've jigged all trip. 200 gram Mustad Skaggerbod. The last time we were here, the Captain Eduardo said he really likes red. So we brought some Rojo Red jigs. Look at this current. Yeah. Back at you with the Highly requested midday updates. We are deep at, deep jigging at this point. Am I on? Oh my gosh! Are you having we a fish both on? on? I don't know if I have a fish. I don't think I have Do a I fish. Do I not have a no. fish either? What the heck? Oh no, I have a yeah, fish. Yeah, you have a I fish. I have a fish. All right, we'll skip the midday update for now. We'll see what Vic's got. <laughs> no, you can give us the midday mm -hmm. update while so I'm hooked up. So we are jigging in some super deep water. I think I have a fish. You, you gotta have a fish. We're really not sure what's going on here, to be honest. If we're well, just the <laughs> straight up, up. It is, we're both tight <laughs> in Panama. We're in about 500 feet of water. This is the deepest we've ever fished in Panama. And there's these grouper that they call Cherna grouper, which we're trying to target. They get big. They're like a snowy grouper that we have back home. They get Javier big. says there's other species here as well, which these fish don't feel very big, but good to finally pull on something today. Dude, they look like a long tail sea bass, don't they? Grouper attack? He's saying that the grouper try to eat this. He said next time you get a bite, you leave this down there if it feels small and then the grouper will eat it. Tough to imagine that that is living in 500 feet of water. We actually have these in Florida. Don't know if it's the exact same species, but long tail sea bass, you see his really, it's like an extension of his dorsal fin. Um, just really pretty fish. Delicious to eat, and we're looking for something much bigger down there to keep telling you guys about, but I'm assuming there's probably a hundred of these to every grouper down there. So it's gonna be a matter of either getting your jig noticed by a grouper and not one of these guys, or leaving these guys down there long enough to get noticed by a grouper and get eaten. Whatever sandwich they packed us. The bread they use here is delicious. It's the best. I don't know ever. what it is or what about it, but love it. And then they usually pack us like a little pasta salad or rice salad or something of the sorts. I love canned tuna. And today we got a canned tuna salad. These boys, not the biggest canned tuna fans. So. I'm still gonna eat it. <laughs> calories are calories, man. They keep you going on the water. No luck for us with the grouper, but we were blessed with one of nature's most gentle giants. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> wow, look at this. Not every day you come out here and see a whale shark. Dennis just jumped in with the underwater housing, getting some really cool footage for you guys and for himself. I know he lives for these moments. 
I think this is like one of the favorite things about his job is, you know, getting up close and personal with nature. He loves to use that underwater housing every chance he gets. And I don't know what better way to use it than swimming with a whale shark. Whale shark is not frightened by us at all. Yeah, I think he's really curious to know what we are. Oh. It's turning sideways. So now you can say you've swam with two whale sharks. How to go? This one was a baby, but it's so friendly. Every time, every time I dive down and try to get like a different shot of him, he'd always turn like his his top side towards me. Maybe like it's uh, like a defense type of thing. I don't think it was. I think he literally was playing with you. And it like kicked away for a second, then it turned around. And was like, oh, I, I still want to play more. Yeah. Cool man, it was cool, cool to watch from above. I'm sure it was cooler to experience underwater. <laughs> Definitely got some uh, really, really awesome footage, I'm sure. So, hope you guys enjoy it. <laughs> and if you guys are liking this video so far, you should like the video, especially because Dennis just jumped in the water with the whale shark, which I think is truly once in a lifetime experience. But for this guy, it's twice in a lifetime now. Twice in a lifetime now. Film with land shark, you know how they say. I, I don't know possible. how they say <laughs> anything's possible. We'll take it. Dr yeah, this is where dreams do come true. All right guys, so I am throwing the little popper, Ryan's throwing the stick bait, and one thing that's super important when we go on these trips is a good pair of sunglasses. We're both actually rocking Waterlinko sunglasses. I'm rocking the blue Millikins right now, and you guys can actually save 15% off. Use my code LANDSHARK, I'll have them linked below. And it's one thing I feel like fishermen kind of neglect. You spend a bunch of money on rods, reels, lures, you know, for your whole arsenal, but investing in a good pair of sunglasses, I'm watching my popper at all times. I need to see exactly what that thing is doing. I'm casting next to rocks, I'm casting next to bait. I really want to be dialed in and having a good pair of sunglasses really helps me as an angler. Vic, what are you thinking about right now? If this fish even exists, to be honest with you. You hear all these stories. I've seen them come up to the popper, but do they actually eat the popper? Because I'll tell you what, I haven't had one eat mine. No, it's, it's just the name of the game. I feel like this is the type of fishery where you could come here and you will get so spoiled your first time, you might catch five or six on a popper and you could come back three or four times and not catch one. I think trying to do what we're doing, catching a bottom fish that lives in 100 feet of water, 50 feet of water, to come up top where he's not comfortable and eat this thing on top of the water is extremely unique and you have to have the perfect conditions and you gotta have the right fish or school of fish that are willing to take a popper on top. I just think that's it. We're trying to pretty much do the impossible. Just imagine six days of staring at a pink popper, doing the same thing over and over and over again. You know how many Kuberas I think I've seen? Every single cast I think I see a Kubera or something underneath my popper. Can't stare at the popper anymore. I need to do something different for my sanity. So I'm gonna go with the stick bait. Morale is at an all-time low. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, listen, not. listen, I keep it real. If you come to another country and you're trying to catch all these fish and your voice cracks in the middle of what you're trying to say, you know, it's, it's okay to be real. Sometimes fishing sucks, man. Sometimes you question why you fish. And today's just, this is one of those moments. You can still be appreciative and disappointed at the same time. There's a 100% chance this goes in the video. Ryan just said there's not going in the video. 
I always love playing at this fillet table because check it out. They got this just big slab of stone. It just makes you feel, I don't know, like you're in the countryside. It just makes you feel rustic, you know? Like people used to do back in the day before they had actual fillet tables. They just basically used any flat surface they could. And you guys know I had to bring my Dexters along with me on the trip. This is an eight inch Dexter flexible fillet and you guys can save 20% off if you use my code Landshark. If you guys are interested in a fillet knife I will have them linked below. It's on the pink side. It's a, uh, for me, Rainbow Runner is not a fish that I like to cook. It's something that I want to eat as sashimi, sushi, or ceviche. It's got a beautiful texture, a firm texture, which makes it a really good fish to eat raw. Look at that. It is on the bloodier side, and it's got a pretty decent bloodline, but as long as you cut it out, it'll be perfectly fine. Look at that. And one thing you guys will notice, we had ice and coolers on the boat today. So this lodge actually got out, bought out by a new guy named Derek, which you guys will see in this video, I'm sure. And um, definitely has the same viewpoint as us Westerners when it comes to icing your fish. He really wanted to provide a good quality product for his customers. And I can tell you right now, this looks just as good as the fish we have back home. I'm really impressed at how fast you just cleaned that out because I jumped in the pool the minute you walked out here and I just did like all down and back and I come back and the fish is already filleted and that would have taken me, I don't know, twice as long, three times as long and my man's already working over here. Well, you know, Ryan, when you've made 600 catch and cooks, <laughs> this is what happens, right? Mm -hmm. Breakfast makes perfect. Earlier you guys saw me cut up the African pompano and the rainbow runner and I combined it in a bowl with some avocado and I must say so that the avocados in Panama are 10 times better than the ones we have in Florida. They're bigger, they're juicier, they just look better and uh, yeah, got some scallion in there and then I made a little spicy mayo which you guys have seen me make a million times. Super easy, mayo, sriracha, sesame oil, lime juice. I'm just keeping it really basic. I just want everyone to try a little bit of the Rainbow Runner and African Pompano at the lodge. So we're gonna just drizzle our um, spicy mayo onto here. Sesame seeds for the flavor and also for the, uh, the appearance. Wow. It's a yeah. lot of sesame seeds, huh? Dude, big sesame seed guy. Love sesame seeds. You know what's nice about Panda Fishing is they had all of the ingredients that you ever wanted and they just let you come in here and just start making what you wanted. And commandeer the kitchen, as Ryan would say. You did, dude. Yeah. You just walked in here like you own the place. It's this crazy. is the first time I've seen Glory without a knife staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm doing okay. This is just a little simple thing. That What I like about this lodge is every single time I've come here, you got a different group of people. First time I came here, you had a group of Italian guys. I met the craziest Peruvian fisherman, shout out to Pato, who was actually supposed to be here, but he couldn't make it. He left us high and dry. It's yeah. We wanted like a good dynamic, because last trip we like made a bunch of bets with the other group. Team um, America versus Team Peru. Yeah, Team Peru totally won. Every time. But <laughs> What I like about this lodge is you meet so many different people from all around the world of different cultures. And like the Peruvian guys, every time they come here, they also take over the kitchen. They like to make ceviche. They made a really good crudo dish last time with some parm and capers. And it's just nice to share, you know, different recipes. And at the end of the day, you spend eight hours fishing, but you spend the rest of the time at the lodge. And it's so much more than the fishing. That's what I like is it all comes together. This is the man, Derek. This is the owner of the lodge. Thank you for having us. But we got Brad, Chris, Melissa, and we got Chef Gloria. And you guys want to try some? Can I go ahead? Yeah, go for it. That's good. Spicy. <laughs> but good. It's spicy. Yeah. <laughs> it is spicy. Oh, it is spicy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. I'm getting it. I like cooking spicy. for you guys. Oh, yeah, you like it. You're eating straight from the bowl. I love hot food, so it's good. Dude, it's delicious. I was eating the whole time you were in Oh, were now. you? Yeah, dude. I was starving. You put this good food in front of me. Go on, wait. It was like, not like I couldn't eat it, you know what I mean?
He loves me. This is uh, definitely our windiest day out here. We ran way, way, way to the west. I think the wind coming off of the mountains and the valley really like just creates this crazy funnel. So we're staying really close to shore. It's out there. It's bad. It's it's just like unfishable pretty much. So we're staying really close to shore. You got to deal with the deck of cards that you're dealt. So here we are. We're getting after it. Okay, I'm starting out the morning throwing this really cool looking lure. Almost looks too pretty to even throw. I got this in Mexico when we were with our good friend Jamie. It's a little stick bait. Ryan threw in a popper, so mine subsurface. This is right on top. And there's okay. a bunch of little rocks right here off the beach, so. Throw to your left a little bit. We're just casting right on top of them. How many pops does it take to get to the center of a Kubera's heart? Imagine you fly very, very many miles to a very, very hot country with the potential of something epic to happen at any second, but you spend three days doing this. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And the captain looks at the water and he goes, mm, no good, mm, no good. And by the end of the third day, you still want to pop for some reason on the fourth and fifth day and the sixth day because that's what fishing's about. So I'm going to leave off on a positive not, note. I'm glad you're not quitting because honestly today I thought it was just going to be like, boys, change the flights, I'm going home. So it's just good. about. It's good. My man's still in the fight. Bluebirds 23-1. When the ocean is blowing, you're still going. Be a man. Bluebirds 23-1. And if you guys don't know why it's called the Bluebirds, my last name is Bluebin. All right, so set the scene for us. I will say this. It's our fourth day out here, and it definitely feels the fishiest. I don't know about you, Nice beach days are generally not good fishing days. Kind of overcast, gloomy, no sun, a lot of crowd cover. I like those for fishing days. Don't know if it's true or not, but I just feel like the fish bite better. It's got that like ominous monster-like feeling. This is definitely what I'm gonna do. You're gonna get hit like that and the rod's gonna get ripped out of your hands. As a pier fisherman, you know how to do this professionally because when you were a kid, a young man at the pier, and your dad gave you 20 bucks for the whole weekend to survive, and you had a $5 sabiki rig and you had to make it last the whole weekend, Yeah. and you had to get that thing untangled, you developed a certain kind of skill. Yep, you re-bent the hooks after they were straightened out. I don't know how to solve that though. That's oh, okay. It's it'll solved. it'll solved. solve on the time. Amberjack. Yeah. I got I got eaten on the way down, guys. See that rod doubled over. Ryan just caught himself a little yellow snapper. But yeah, I was just letting the jig just drop down and this guy ate it like mid-water column right here. Man, it feels good to pull on a fish after four days. But little did he know, plot twist, it's a 15 pound bonita. I know that's what you came here for. I came here to hang out with you guys. You're really taking your time with that fish, aren't you, huh? You're really you know relishing what? You this moment. You should worry about the own fish. Oh wait, you don't have a fish. I just caught a snapper. I got a fish in the box. Do you have a fish in the box? Uh-huh. I'm about to have an amberjack in the box. Jack Crevel. Or you're about to have a Jack Crevel in the box, my friend. The mighty Jack Crevel. Javi actually called it. He literally said it was a Jack Crevel when you hooked up. Jack. No amberjack. Oh, Jack. Jack Crevel. Javi did. There we go. We're tight. Just off the bottom. Little head shake action. Ryan got another Benita. Oh, Rainbow Runner. Oh. On the bottom? Oh, near, right near the bottom. <laughs> Well, this is the most action we've seen all trip. Uh, snapper, Rainbow Runner, Jack Crevel, lots of Benita on the jig. So I guess this is what we'll keep doing for now. Ah! 
Kind of fighting like a bonita, but I'm not sure. Oh no, amberjack, amberjack, all macojack, right? Hard fighting fish right there, guys. Hard fighting fish, especially when you hook them sideways like that. All macojack, and the reason you can tell, you see that really pronounced tall dorsal fin right there. He's got a point. That's how you know it's an all macojack, and they also have a really broad body, just like back home. Delicious. We're gonna put this guy in the cooler. Uh-huh. Tacked on the way to, oh, I had swimming me up. Probably a small blue runner or something. Oh no, Barracuda. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to lose the jig. He's all frayed up. <laughs> look, loco. Pescado es muy loco. Oh, okay. No bien. Look, puffer on top. Kubera, boom! <laughs> oh, look, 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 something is, something is chasing it. Oh, oh. <laughs> Something's gonna eat it. One needlefish ate my popper, and then that'll, another needlefish swam through my line, cut my braid, and the needlefish was freaking out. We should be able to get the popper back because it's floating, but I don't see it. I think that the needlefish sank. I'm gonna take my frustration out on those lemon cookies when we get back, I can tell you that. and girls. We're hopping into another day here in Panama, doing what Ryan and I love doing, even though sometimes it can be miserable, even though sometimes you feel like you're doing a lot of work for absolutely nothing. The thrill of watching something come up and try to eat a popper is undescribable. So this is our first time on this whole trip where we've actually headed east instead of west. Just the excitement of trying something new this morning, you know? And we're headed to Vic's favorite place on earth, Iguana Island, where I caught my wahoo the first time I came here, and I caught a 50 pound rooster as well. As you guys see, this is the most boats we've seen all trip. There's actually a fishing tournament, and that's one of the reasons Javi was reluctant to come to this island, because he knew that there was gonna be a lot of boats trolling. And since they're trolling around, it's never good when you're artificial lure fishing because it tends to scare the fish. Anything that's on the surface or subsurface pushes fish down and away. And plus you're just competing with a bunch of other fishermen for the same fish. So he tried to avoid it and we just had like three boats just troll right by us. Attacker, attacker, Javi. Good, big attacker. Big attack. Uh, close to the bottom. Oh my gosh, guys. Dude, it blows my mind how something can hit something so hard and not get hooked. Nearly ripped the rod out of my hands, just like a big violent strike. The lure looks. Oh, oh that's a big yeah, scale. Cubera. Cubera. Woo! You guys, look at this. That's the scale of the Kubera, probably hey, kubera. from his face. You can tell that is not, wow. not a small yeah, no. fish scale. 100% Kubera snapper right there. Or some type of big snapper. Big. Look, the lure doesn't even look like it's a... Uh, I don't know where he would have attacked it. I don't really see any damage on it, but that's crazy. But that just raises your confidence that much more to keep doing what you're doing. Seeing that scale just solidifies why we're psychotic and keep casting and casting and casting. All right, the update is, there is no update. We have not, well, I guess okay. I caught a horse eye jack. That's pretty much There's it. some positivity. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. 
Let's go. I don't know what I hooked, but I hooked something on this stick bait. Kind of got tail beats like a jack. I think I hooked the jack. That lock drag, son. Yeah. <laughs> We've tried to pull it in this kitchen this morning and we barely pulled it. Where are you? You gonna catch your very first milkfish? <laughs> Dude, if this is a milkfish, I'd be stoked. <laughs> Jack's on lock drag. Oh, well, we know the stick bait works. So that's what the guides here do is they uh, just lip gaff everything. That way you're not really harming the fish that much. You put a little hole in them and he's gonna safely unhook this jack right now. So I've never hooked a Kubera snapper on a spinning rod. Only ever fought them on conventionals. And I know their power and I know I've hyped this up in so many different videos for you guys. That little eight pound jack absolutely just kicked my ass with lock drag. I can't imagine what a 50, 70 pound Kubera is gonna do. And I think Javi has really not liked us throwing the stick bait. And I think it's because when you hook a Kubera on a stick bait, you're already that much lower in the water column. Whereas if you hook them on a popper, you have that much more time to try to get them up off the bottom. Guys, could this be the one? Could this be it, Dennis? Oh, oh it's the Kubera! Kubera! Oh my gosh, look at that yeah. fish. Oh my gosh, look at that fish. Oh. Keep his head down. Oh. oh my god, guys. My heart is pumping. It's the fish we've been waiting for. Okay, trying to keep it real calm. I don't want that hook to pull. I don't want him to go down. Oh. oh my gosh, guys, look at the size of that fish. Yeah! <laughs> On the sixth day, he gave us a Kubera! On the sixth day! You guys, I, I'm shaking. I'm speechless. <laughs> Holy Dude, smokes. Look at that thing. Oh. That's a monster. Monster. Oh, oh my gosh. Dude. Holy moly. Oh. Javi. <laughs> Six days of popping and jigging for that right there. That'll drive a man insane right there. Oh. You guys, that fish is every bit of 50 maybe even 60 pounds right there. This is a fish I have chased for close to three weeks on artificial right here. And it finally came together. You can ask Ryan and Dennis, I was down in the dumps the last two days. I haven't eaten anything in 30 hours. I went on a fast because I was just so emotionally wrecked. And this fish completely just changes the mood for everyone right wow, there. Big one. Oh yeah, big, look at this. Dennis, look at those teeth. The, the, these fish are just absolute brutes it's around Victor right now. It's an absolute donkey of a fish. Just to show you guys the perspective, let's, let's, right let's hold it out like, like that. Oh my God, bro. That's ridiculous. That thing's a monster. Oh yeah. Dude, the big nasty king of the reef. You knew when that thing hit, that was it. That was that it. was the fish. Yep, you feel the head shakes and everything. Okay guys, now the most important part of this whole thing, I worked six days in a row to get this fish. 
I'm gonna do everything in my power for this fish to swim off in peace, undisturbed. So what I did is we put that lip gaff back through its lip and we're reviving it right now. It could take 10 minutes, it could take 15 minutes, doesn't matter, we're gonna do what we have to do. And in case you guys are wondering, this fish, one of its favorite meals is a lobster. If you know anything about lobster, they are hard, they're, uh, they're not very inviting. A little lip gaff in this guy's mouth is not gonna do anything. These are extremely hardy fish, probably the hardiest fish in the ocean, meanest, strongest, smartest. I mean, as you can see, this is the first like real Kubera bite we've had the entire trip. Just, you gotta be confident and persistent and throw in that stick bait. You gotta and, be a little uh, insane, my friend. Very much insane. See his tail, he's already moving his tail. And we're just gonna ensure that this guy, you know, when we release him, a dolphin's not gonna try to eat him or a shark's not gonna try to eat him. javi has been doing this his whole life and he says this is the hardiest fish in the ocean. How the heck are you feeling, man? Speechless. <laughs> I, you know the word? <clears throat> Insanity, correct me if I'm wrong, but doing something over and over and over again with not and expecting different results. And you do this for six days of pure insanity, targeting this fish because you've seen your buddy do it, you've seen the pictures on the wall at the lodge, you've heard the stories, you've even seen YouTube videos, but you haven't done it yourself. And when you prepare and you just stay persistent, man, it goes with anything in life. Repetitions, you can do anything you set your mind to. As cheesy as that sounds, it is so true. Put in perspective of how special this fish is, this is my third time to Panama. I've spent three times in Mexico trying to get one on artificial. Probably over 20 days of popping and jigging for this fish right here. That's how special it is. Ready? The satisfaction of watching this fish swim away was just as exciting as catching it. Six days and a thousand casts later led to a fish forever engraved in my mind. Little did we know this would be the start of a monumental afternoon of fishing. Muy bien, Javier. Gracias, señor. <laughs> I'm so thankful for this guy in the water because he's a hard working cameraman and he's getting some incredible footage, I know that. Ryan was saying earlier Sorry. on the trip, he goes, you do know that once one of us catches a Kubera on one bait, whether it's the stick bait or popper, that's all we're gonna wanna throw. <laughs> and we're both throwing the stick bait now because even though we know both things work and there's gonna be a time and place for everything, it's kind of like the grass is green on the other side. You know, if you see one lure works, why would you try to the other one? Ryan's like, do you remember what it was like when it hit? I was like, I just blacked out. <laughs> that, those two minutes of that fight was just complete and utter, just trying not to fall, trying not to let my rod go in the water, trying to make sure there's not too much pressure on the fish. Just freak out too much and do something stupid because yeah. you're just excited. It's and very easy to do. Yeah. I'm just happy to have shared it with these guys, you know. Ryan and Dennis mean a lot to me. Ryan's actually gonna be my best man at the wedding. Woo! It's so, gonna be a uh, good time. You guys wish you could see the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's just all in all good memories. Dude, hit him in the head. Reel it over him. Oh! Oh! Got him. Oh! Oh! Are you tight? Got him. Oh my god! Oh! Got him! Oh! Are you got him! Oh! Yeah, uh, no, no. Oh, loosen like, the drag. Loosen the drag, yeah. Oh my god. You guys, god. big rooster on! Giant rooster. Are you kidding me? 
Are you kidding me? How your day and we can change in the matter of a minute. Oh, Javi said big rooster, big rooster. He saw a big rooster just eating something on top. Ryan threw the stick bait at him. He didn't want it. Threw the popper right in his face and he smoked it. Dude, it's big. It's very big. Really? It's very big. Wow. Are you kidding me? Ryan, you, gotta, you gotta start fasting, bro. Dude, I, <laughs> I think if I would have made just a closer shot, I would have had a shot at that fish, but Vic made a better cast than I did. Wow. Let me get this rod out of here. Are you kidding, bro? Calamar? Calamar. It's just incredible how things can change. Six days of pretty much very slow activity, and now you're gonna have two giant fish back to back. I don't think this fish knows he's hooked. That is a big, nasty rooster fish. Huge head shake. Yeah, I think he just Whoa. barely realized he's hooked. Yeah. So with a rooster fish, unlike a Kubera, you don't have to worry about the rocks as much. So as soon as Javi saw that it was a rooster fish, he goes, loosen your drag, loosen your drag, because you don't want those hooks to pull or anything, you know? And wow. fortunately, they don't seem to have a lot of sharks here. How big do you think he was, Ryan? Dude, giant. Really, like yes. over 50? Like it could be the size of the one you caught here before. Really? Yes. Wow. Well, this is a lot longer fight than the Kibera. The <laughs> yeah. is do or die. Oh, I see color. Hold on. Normie oh, rooster! Enorme. Are you gonna do the underwater with this too? 100%. Okay, if you're gonna do the underwater, I would get that ready now and have Ryan film with that because these fish do die really fast. Wow! Grande! Oh my god. <laughs> oh no, oh no. Enormous. See? He don't like the boat. This one. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Javi, oh, you are Javi. the man! Oh, oh my god! My god. <laughs> that thing is huge! <laughs> that thing is huge! <laughs> you guys, look at the size of that fish. Dude, monster. That's my biggest ever rooster fish for sure. Wow, oh my gosh, guys, Dude. look. Look at the size of this freaking rooster, man. <laughs> That is a giant! You guys, look at it! Yeah, see, Capitan! See, Capitan. Capitan. You guys, panda <laughs> fishing. Javi, putting us on the fish look once again, that man. Fish, bro. That is a unit. Woo! <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. That's so sick. To see it on top like that, cruising, trying to eat a bait, and you cast it in there, you sight fished it. Oh, yeah, essentially. Dude, epic. Incredible. Epic. Look at his little mohawk, man. Uh huh. Incredible. Absolutely gorgeous. We got the two kings of the Panama coast today. We got the rooster fish and we got the giant Kubera snapper. Now, most important thing is making fish, making sure these fish survive. So we're going to get them back in the water. <laughs> in the last 30 minutes, monster Kubera, monster rooster fish makes you forget about all the slow times. It makes you forget about the insanity of casting a stick bait or popper over and over and over again. Moments like this make you realize why you come to places like this. The opportunity for once in a lifetime catches and experiences is why you come here. And to share it with the boys makes it that much better. See you later, Mr. Rooster. Oh man, you wow. love to see it. <laughs> Dude.
Dude. <laughs> I got the hardest working cameraman on YouTube. That guy right there. He busts Woo. his butt. <laughs> Work hard, play hard. <laughs> we continued to circle the island and found lots of activity. Ryan was also filming for his channel this day, and I didn't want to take too many of his catches or steal his thunder, but here's a little sneak peek of what you guys could expect in his video. You guys can find his channel linked below. He got into a really big mullet snapper, which still to this day, one of the coolest fish I've ever seen. And he had one hell of a release to go with it. Nice job, boys! So man, not every day you get to swim with a mullet snapper, eh? No, nah, swim underwater with a legit professional uh, photographer. That's a sick fish, man. That's not the fish you think about when you come here, but man, that thing threw down. Let's go, boys! Bam! <laughs> <laughs> Just don't move. Oh, 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 oh big rooster! Oh, big rooster! Oh my gosh, big! Oh my god, what a massive rooster fish. Two back-to-back -back massive once-in-a-lifetime rooster fish kind of leaves a man speechless. Say lightning can't strike twice in the same spot. I think it just did, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it did, man. And there's multiple fish. There's probably like three or four more I big know. ones. Gracias, senor. <laughs> Woo! So I know I'm going to get asked questions of what we were fishing. All the lures, rods tackle leader i'm gonna have everything linked below but big shout out to alan from oceans legacy because he's the one who sets ryan and up with these beautiful rods these are all oceans legacy rods they get the job done some of my best catches ever big yellow from tuna rooster fish on the oceans legacy rods and you guys can actually save a little money use my code land shark linked below as well as tough line leader all i've been fishing this whole trip tough line fluorocarbon you can save 20 percent off on that also use my code land shark have a nice little detailed list for you guys in the description box below. Hey, I can't lie. This is the most homesick I've ever been. We went from Mexico to Panama, back to Panama, three back-to-back -back trips, all like week-long trips, and there's no place like home. We are very fortunate and blessed to be able to go on trips like this. There's nothing like little old Pompano Beach in your own bed. Miss Brookie, haven't seen her in seven days now and it's gonna be nice to go there. Javi, gracias mi amigo. Amazing trip, amazing trip. Muy contento también. Yeah, muy contento. Sí, yeah. Yo también. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Panama City, eh? <laughs> Panama City. Pedasí. Eh? Pedasí. Yeah. Let him know. the world famous Panna Fishing Lodge wall where everyone posts their pictures and I'm pretty sure that this wall right here that's on the wall probably caught that one a long time ago our captain but check it out you guys got pretty much every species yellowfin tuna sharks that's the old owner Pierre with a big kubera mullet snapper plenty of rooster fish um, Kuberas, broomtail, that's one species that me and Ryan are lacking in Panama. We still haven't gotten one. It's really popular to get them jigging. We just haven't gotten one yet. But as you guys see, I mean, plenty of world class, like close to world record size Kubera snapper, sailfish, amberjacks, dolphin. And the best part is every single one of these fish was caught on a lure. And you guys heard me say it in the beginning of the video, you come here, not just for the fish, but you come here to challenge yourself mentally, physically, to put yourself in a very difficult situation for a once in a lifetime opportunity. That's what it is right here. Very few people on earth can say they've caught a big rooster fish and even fewer can say they've done it on artificial. Same thing with the Kubera snapper. And I think just joining that club, it's not an elitism thing. It's just 
you're humbled by the challenge, and that's what makes it so special. Big thank you to this guy right here, Derek and his family. They came here all the way from South Africa, bought the lodge, and they made a new life here, and they're gonna have an amazing time in paradise. He made us his traditional South African curry, and he's gonna explain to you guys what's in it. I'm Africa. super stoked. No, thank you. Um, Basically, it's a, it's a recipe my mother gave me. It's a calamari curry, but we uh, twitched it a bit. Used uh, octopus, there's some albacore tuna, and prawns. It's a traditional Indian curry that I make not regularly in South Africa, but it's the ingredients, the South African curry powder, star anise, cloves, white mustard seeds, all blended together, made into a sauce, and then obviously all the fish products added to it. Cinnamon stick in there, coriander, yeah. And there's a stuff we call a biryani mix, which I mix in with it. A whole lot of different blend, blended spices, cloves, mustard seeds, white mustard seeds. And hopefully it's something that I can maybe carry on with clients coming down here. Yeah, their yeah. last day, this should be the meal. The last day, make it a tradition. Work on it. Let's try it. It's delicious. I, I cheated. I'm already eating it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just looked great, and the flavor profile is perfect. Not too spicy, not too bland. It's the perfect amount of flavor. I'm really, really enjoying it. Have you, have you made curry for the channel yet? I have made curry. It's definitely yeah. not going to be as flavorful as this. I didn't import any spices I'll, from South uh, I'll Africa. I'll take the whole I'm excited one. to try this. This, yeah, this right here, here, like you could be standing 20 feet away, you smell it. It yeah. smells good. Come on, you know we're serious about food on the channel. And getting a taste of someone else's culture and what they grew up with is pretty amazing. Also, to mention that you've been fasting for this moment. <laughs> I wasn't kidding, guys. On the boat. It's amazing. I don't know. I went into a dark place mentally. When you don't catch anything for five days, um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try fasting just for some like mental clarity. And it worked. Got my Kubera. And now this meal is going to be better than ever. It's really good, Derek. Very flavorful. Not too spicy. Lots of different, um, flavors. just yeah, lots of different spices going on. It's it's tangy. It's acidic. It's sweet. It's salty. And I like that it's a seafood curry too. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. A big thank you to Derek and his lovely family, Gloria, Melissa, the staff, and everybody here. And uh, the boys did it. We sent it to Panama. Hopefully, made a nice video for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll catch you in the next one.